So today's topic is coalition. Well, let's not waste any time and get right into it. So we have a definition. The definition is two or more bones forming a bridge, and then in the end it restricts the motion. I want you to think of this commonly found in flat feet or pes planus. There's also a genetic component, but the biggest buzzword is perineal spastic flat foot. So if you see that on exam, you want to definitely work out for a coalition. And when you're working it up, you want to get a CT or an MRI. X-rays don't do complete justice. Then comes the gender. It's usually found in men, and the symptoms the patient is going to come to you with is usually muscle spasms, decreased range of motion, and pain with activity. So there are three very common coalitions that they love to test on the exams. And so I put them in this little triangle and I call it the magical coalition triangle and we'll work our way through this triangle and try to simplify everything so it's very, very simple for you on the test. So we've got the T for talus in the top corner, C for calcaneus on the right corner, and N for navicular on the left corner. The inner circle shows the oldest to the youngest and the least common to the most common. Recent publication, the navicular calcaneus is the most common by 53%. It used to be TN and NC were both 42%. So let's start with the Talocalcaneal Coalition, also abbreviated TC. So going into this coalition, some of the things that I want you to remember about them is the age. So this one is the oldest population, so usually between the ages of 12 and 16 year olds. The next biggest component you want to watch out for is the x-rays. They love to test on which x-rays should I get in order to see this coalition. So for this one, it's the Harris Beef, the lateral oblique view, the Isherwood, specifically looking at the anterior facet, and the medial oblique view. So after the age and the x-ray, the next component I want you to look out is for the signs. Some of the signs that are seen specifically for the talocalcaneus um, is pes valgus is one of them. The next is the ball socket at the ankle joint, the sinus tarsi pain, the tarsal tunnel pain, very commonly one is the halo sign, which is a C shape, the inferior portion is made of the sinus, the sustentacum tali, and then the, you've got the medial aspect of the Taylor dome. They love asking that question. Then comes the Taylor process speaking. So knowing me, I hate the list, so we're going to draw a picture. So here's a picture. Blue line on the bottom is the flat foot. The other blue line is going to be the ball socket. And then the red line is the halo sign. The black X is going to be the sinus tarsi pain. The green X is the Taylor beaking. Know this for the test. So then we have the diagnostic procedures, uh, like we talked about before, the perineal spasms. They usually occur, so if you do a perineal nerve block, you'll have a better way of like assessing the subtalar joint and seeing if it can even move in range of motion. If it doesn't, you're suspecting coalition. Like I said, x-rays are one way to look at the coalition. You want to look for the middle and the posterior facet. And if you notice that they're parallel like this picture, that means that they're no coalition. But if there's greater than 25 degree angle to them, like the picture on the right, definitely a coalition. And that further imaging is always recommended. So we know about the signs, we know about the diagnosed procedures, now the x-rays, how do we treat this? So one of the treatment is a subtalar joint fusion or a triple, depending on how the other joints are. Resection, which Make sure you know the incision they love to use. It's called the Cincinnati incision, which is just a medial approach. And then they're resecting about one to four millimeters of bone and putting adipose tissue from the Kegger's triangle. Again, not very commonly done because the success rate is pretty poor. So that was TC. Okay, let's get right into the navicular calcaneal coalition. This one is the most common one found and it's found in the age group between 8 to 12 years. Again, in boys mainly, and it's also one of them that's commonly found bilateral, so on both feet. The extra imaging I want you to get is the medial oblique view, also called the lateral oblique projection. The signs for this one is called the anteater sign, which you can see in the x-ray picture right besides there. 
uh, how it kind of forms this little out beaking of it. Uh, this is also the only one that's extra articular. So we call this a bar. Uh, by extra articular, we just mean these two bones normally don't touch each other. So that's why it's an extra articular coalition. So now the symptoms for this one is also perineal spasms and kind of like that flat foot component to it, like all the other ones have also. And then conservative treatment, always consider conservative treatment as an option, obviously before going into surgery. So you can offer some orthotics, you can modify those orthotics because definitely they'll have some sort of flat foot component. And then if that just fails, then consider obviously surgery. Uh, for the surgical um, aspect for this coalition, some of the options that you can think of is doing again a fusion doing cons uh, the resection is also an option too. The resection is a little bit more successful than the TC one. This resection, you're going in resecting about um, at 1 to 1.5 centimeters, usually for patients less than 14 years of age, it works better. Also, if it's sin fibrosis, so not like bone on bone, like sin osteosis, it does much better. You want to use an incision. It's called the Olaire's incision. It's an oblique incision across the medial side of, along, sorry, along the sinus tarsi. And the procedure itself is called the Badgerly procedure. They love that buzzword. Um, it's again one to one point five centimeter rectangular shape. You remove it. You can add fat to it. You can add the EDB muscle to it. You can put bone wax. So this all prevents bone from growing back. Biggest thing with this one, if you notice in the question stem that the patient's complaining of still coalition-like pain, check for more than one coalition because that is definitely possible. So moving on to talonavicular coalition. So this one's found in the youngest patient population group, and this group is usually between the ages of three and five years old. So pretty young population. The x-rays for this one, doing like an AP, usually you're able to see this pretty clearly for it. So knowing that x-ray view, another very important component for each of these coalitions. So some of the things I want you to look out for, again, the sign for this one is called the putter sign. And then you'll notice that the cymaline line is absent dorsally, and you'll notice very dead giveaway is usually a really long tailor neck, and that's because the talus and the navicular kind of fuse together and form this big bone. Forfeit varus is another look to the foot, and then intra-articular coalition for the TN. Remember the NC was the one that was extra articular. So treatment, you can put a little bit of padding. Sometimes that prominence can be bothersome. Surgically resecting it is also another option for this one too. And then I love to drop in a picture so then you don't forget. See that long tailor neck just really lengthened out. You don't really see that distinction between the talus and the navicular in, in this particular one. So here's that full page. See so of all the coalitions kind of really nicely laid out for you to memorize it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions on other podiatry related topics I should go over next, leave a comment below or visit the website. Dr. CB signing off. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.